is God bless. Welcome back to my channel. I am Charlene and today we are on day 93 and we will be reading Judges 10 through 11. So we are making way you guys. We are uh, a little over halfway, well, we will be when we get done with today with Judges, because Judges has 21 chapters, right? So then we're going to go into Ruth, and Ruth can be read in a single day. Me and my daughter have done it countless times, and I've done it myself. And then, of course, First Samuel. So we are in order. Y'all, we are a third of the way done with the Bible reading plan, technically, because you go, um, is it third way? Oh, wait. I want to feel 90 plus 90 is 180. 180 plus 90 is, I guess so we're a fourth way done, technically. But anyway, we're not rushing. We got time, right? <laughs> we got time to get to know our God. So let's do that. And before we get into actual reading, let us pray. Lord God, I truly thank you for this day. And I love you. Lord, I give you all the honor, glory, and praise. You are a good and awesome God. We want to know you. We want to learn of you. We want to know your ways. We want to honor you. And we also want to keep your commands and decrees in reference to continuously remembering what you have done, what you are doing, and what you're gonna go what you're going to do. Excuse me. We can't thank you enough, Lord God. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for your son. Thank you for his blood. Lord, I thank you for each and every person that is reading along with me. Keep them, Lord. Bless them, sanctify them. Lord, creating of all of us a clean heart, renew the spirit within us, Lord God. Help us to be new creatures in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let me scoot up. I know some, I have not been faithful in putting my glasses on, but I keep messing up lately. And I said, I'm going to do right. Plus, I got some new ones coming. And guess what? They're blue. Bella helped me pick, me up, pick them out. I said I want to not be so basic so ooh, i like that i definitely can see <laughs> chapter 10 after abimelech died tola son of pure son of dodo was the next person to rescue israel he was from the tribe of issachar but lived in the town of shammer in the hill country of Ephraim. he judged israel for 23 years when he died he was buried in shamir after tola died Jer from Gilead judged Israel for 22 years. His 30 sons rode around on 30 donkeys and they owned 30 towns in the land of Gilead, which are still called the towns of Jer. When Jer died, he was buried in Canaan. Again, the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. They served the images of Baal and Ashtoreth and the gods of Aram, Sidon, Moab, Amon and what is that? Philistia. They abandoned the Lord and no longer served him at all. That's a really big deal, y'all. So they start doing evil in the sight of the Lord again. And they start following and trying to serve and pray to other guys. And mind you, these guys are not alive. They're not living, breathing guys. There are materials. There are things that are made by man, man made ideas and man made gods. Sound familiar today, folks? So where am I? So the Lord burned with anger against Israel and he turned them over to the Philistines and the Ammonites who began to oppress them that year. For 18 years, they oppressed all the Israelites east of the Jordan River in the land of the Amorites. That is in Gilead. The Ammonites also crossed to the west side of the Jordan and attacked Judah, Benjamin, and Ephraim. The Israelites were in great distress. Finally, they cried out to the Lord for, helping, for help, saying, We have sinned against you because we have abandoned you as our God and have served the images of Baal. The Lord replied, did I not rescue you from the Egyptians, the Amorites, the Ammonites, and the Philistines, the Sidians, the Amaleks, and the Monites? When they oppressed you, you cried out to me for help, and I rescued you. Yet you have abandoned me and served other gods, so I would not rescue you anymore. 
So this is pretty much God putting his foot down. Go and cry out to gods you have chosen. Let them rescue you in your hour of distress. Oh, excuse me. Don't say I got hiccups. <laughs> Lord have mercy. But the Israelites pleaded with the Lord and said, We have sinned. Punish us as you see fit. Only rescue us today from our enemies. Then the Israelites put aside their foreign gods and served the Lord. And he was grieved by their misery. So, of course, this just shows us that God has a heart. He definitely does care. And when we're in trouble, he feels sorry for us. He has sympathy and empathy. The same thing that we should have when, although someone's sin may have caused them to fall into a situation, we must also show sympathy and empathy for them. This is not excusing the sin, because even here, they had enough sense to say, Lord, deal with us, but please help us in this moment. So they admit, and they realize that they have sinned, and that they deserve punishment. Verse, uh, verse 17. At that time, the armies of Ammon had gathered for war and were camped in Gilead. And the people of Israel assembled and camped at Mizpah. The leaders of Gilead said to each other, whoever attacks the Ammonites first will become the ruler over all the people of Gilead. So they already set a plan in motion. Like whoever is brave enough to go do this, they will be the leader. All right. So that was the conclusion of chapter 10. And now we're moving along into chapter 11. Now, Japheth, a Jephatha of Gilan was a great warrior. He was the son of Gilan, but his mother was a prostitute. Gilan's wife also had several sons. And when these half brothers grew up, they chased Jephatha off the land. You would not get any of our father's inheritance, they said, for you are the son of a prostitute. So Jephatha fled from his brothers and lived in the land of Tob. Soon he had a band of worthless rebels following him. At about this time, the Ammonites began their war against Israel. When the Ammonites attacked, the elders of Gilead sent for Jephatha in the land of Tob. The elders said, come and be our commander. Help us fight the Ammonites. But Jephatha said to them, aren't you the ones who hated me and drove me from my father's house? Why do you come to me now when you're in trouble? Because we need you, the elders replied. If you lead us in battle against the Ammonites, we will make you ruler over the people of Gilead. So now they're trying to bribe him. Like, yeah, we know what we did. We know what happened. But can you please come help us? Jephatha said to... I'm not even sure. Jephatha? Jephatha said to the elders, let me get this straight. If I come with you and if the Lord gives me victory over the Ammonites... Will you really make me ruler over all the people? The Lord is our witness, the elders replied. We promise to do whatever you say. So Jephatha went with the elders of Gilead and the people made him their ruler and commander of the army. At Mizpah, in the presence of the Lord, Jephatha repeated what he had said to the elders. Then Jephatha sent messengers to the king of Ammon asking, why have you come out to fight against my land? The king of Ammon answered Jephatha messengers. When the Israelites came out of Egypt, they stole my land from the Arnon River to the Jephok River and all the way to the Jordan. Now then, give back the land peacefully. Jephatha sent his message back to the Ammonite king. This is what Jephatha said. Israel did not steal any land from Moab or Ammon. When the people of Israel arrived at Kadesh on their journey from Egypt after crossing the Red Sea, they sent messengers to the king of Edom asking for permission to pass through his land, but their request was denied. Then they asked the king of Moab for similar permission, but he wouldn't let them pass through either. So the people of Israel stayed in Kadesh. Finally, they went around Edom and Moab through the wilderness. They traveled along Moab's eastern border and camped on the other side of the Arnon River. But they never once crossed the Arnon River into Moab, for the Arnon was the border of Moab. Then Israel sent messengers to King Shahan of the Amorites who ruled over Hezbon, asking for permission to cross through his land to get to their destination. But King Shahan didn't trust Israel to pass through his land. Instead, he mobilized his army at Jahaz and attacked them. But the Lord, the God of Israel, gave his people victory over King Sahan. So Israel took control of all the land of the Amorites who lived in that region from the Arnon River 
to the Jabbok River and from the eastern wilderness to the Jordan. So you see, it was the Lord, the God of Israel, who took away the land from the Amorites and gave it to Israel. Why then should we give it back to you? You keep whatever your God Shemash gives you, and we will keep whatever the Lord our God gives us. Are you any better than Balak, son of Zephor, king of Moabite? Did he try to make a case against Israel for disputed land? Did he go to war against them? Israel has been living here for 300 years, inhabiting Hezbon and its surrounding settlements, all the way to Aror and its settlements, and in all the towns along the Arnon River. Why have you made no effort to recover it before now? Therefore, I have not sinned against you. Rather, you have wronged me by attacking me. Let the Lord who is judged decide today which of us is right, Israel or Ammon. So, such wise words. He knew the past history. He knew the story. He knew what happened and he knew what took place. So he was able to present his argument well, without error. We are also supposed to do this, people. We're supposed to be able to be in this Bible so much so that if someone had a question about this incident, we should be able to answer it. We need to spend more time in God's word, learning the God of yesterday, today, and forever because he is the same. He has not changed. There's a history that we need to read to understand and comprehend so that we can have better comprehension and understanding for today. And again, for anyone who's confused or have any question concerns, we should be able to answer them with confidence in the Lord that we know him and we know what has taken place. And there's no greater evidence than the written word. And it's all here. So, verse 28. But the king of Ammon paid no attention to Japheth's message. At that time, the spirit of the Lord came upon Japheth, and he went throughout the land of Gilead and Manasseh, including Mespah and Gilead. And from there, he led an army against the Ammonites. And Japheth made a vow to the Lord. He said, if you give me victory over the Ammonites, I will give to the Lord whatever comes out of my house to meet me when I return in triumph. I will sacrifice it as a burnt offering. So this is a big deal. I don't know if y'all heard of the story before, before today, but brace yourself. So Jephthah led his army against the Ammonites and the Lord gave him victory. He crushed the Ammonites, devastating about 20 towns from Aror to an area near Minith and as far away as Abel Kerimon. In this way, Israel defeated the Ammonites. When Jephthah returned home to Mizpah, his daughter came out to meet him, playing on a tamarind and dancing for joy. She was his one and only child. He had no other sons or daughters. When he saw her, he tore his clothes in anguish. Oh, my daughter, he cried out. You have completely destroyed me. You've brought disaster on me, for I have made a vow to the Lord and I cannot take it back. And she said, Father, if you have made a vow to the Lord, you must do what do to me what you have vowed, for the Lord has given you a great victory over your enemies, the Ammonites. But first, let me do this one thing. Let me go up in Rome in the hills and weep with my friends for two months because I will die a virgin. Verse 38, you may go, Jephatha said, and he sent her away for two months. She and her friends went into the hills and wept because she would die. She would never have children. When she returned home, her father kept the vow he made and she died a virgin. So it has become a custom of Israel for young Israelite women to go away for four days each year to limit the fate of Japheth's daughter. So please understand that dying without children is a big deal because one, she cannot carry on uh, anybody's family name. Two, she was the only son of this person. And you now he has no one, you know, to continue to grow and blossom the family. Now, of course, he always can have more children, but at this point in time, it was emphasis put on the fact that he, she was his one and only son. Very, very interesting story. When I first heard it, I was like, we are so quick to promise things to God, and we sometimes don't even know what that means. And it's very interesting that this story came up at this point in time, because I remember telling my daughter, that I said, if something happens to this, then this must mean that. And 
you just want to take it back though. <laughs> you just got to be careful. Like you just, you know, trust God that whatever needs to be happened would take place. Now, of course, I don't know what this young man had, but you know, he could have said flocks, herds, my first, this and that. And I'm sure the Lord would have been pleased, but he gave up his one and only child, one and only daughter. Wow. And one thing that stood out to me also is the fact that her being a woman, you know, and during this time and even now, God has said that we are to honor the men in our lives. And for her, it would have been her father because she's not married. She doesn't have her own family. For married women, it's their husbands that whenever they say something, you know, you're 100% with it, whether you agree with it or not. I know that's hard. I know that's complicated, especially in this situation here. I don't know. I probably would have, you know, tried to fend for my life. Like, oh my goodness, you sure you want to, you know, do what you told the Lord and da, da 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 da. But knowing better, the custom then was definitely um, traditional. The church, the traditional way of the relationship between children and their parents and husband and wife was definitely stronger and more prominent. And she was like, "Okay, God. Okay, Lord. Okay, Father." You made this vow. You got to keep it. Chapter 12. Then the people of Ephraim mobilized an army and crossed over the Jordan River to Zephon. They sent this message to Jephatha. Why didn't you call for us to help you fight against the Ammonites? We are going to burn down your house with you in it. Jephatha replied, I summoned you at the beginning of the dispute, but you refused to come. You failed to help us in our struggle against Ammon. So when I realized you weren't coming, I risked my life and went to battle without you. And the Lord gave me victory over the Ammonites. So why have you now come to fight me? And that he did and that they did. So this is just proof that God is enough. He asked God for victory and God gave it to him with the little he had. Verse four, the people of Ephraim responded, you went you men of Gilan are nothing more than fugitives from Ephraim and Manasseh. So Zephatha gathered all the men of Gilan and attacked the men of Ephraim and defeated them. Once again, the Lord is with them. Zephatha captured the shallow crossings of the Jordan River. And whenever a fugitive from Ephraim tried to go back across, the men of Gilan would challenge him. Are you a member of the tribe of Ephraim? They would ask. If the man said, no, I'm not, they would tell him to say Shibboleth. If he was from Ephraim, he would say Sibboleth because people from Ephraim cannot pronounce the word correctly. Then they would take him and kill him at the shallow crossings of the Jordan. And all 42,000 Ephraims were killed at that time. Yikes. I wonder if there's any other regions or places where a certain word cannot be pronounced like we know that people pronounce things differently right but i wonder if there's any certain word that like you know for example us north Carolinians would not be able to properly pronounce and someone would say you must be from carolinas <laughs> i don't know but that is interesting jephatha judged israel for six years when he died he was buried in one of the towns of Gilead. after jephatha Jephatha died. Ibzan, or Ib Ibzan from Bethlehem judged Israel. He had 30 sons and 30 daughters. He sent his daughters to marry men outside his clan, and he brought his 30 young women from outside his clan to marry his sons. Ibzan judged Israel for seven years. When he died, he was buried at Bethlehem. Verse 11. After Ibzan died, Elon from the tribe of Zebulun, judged Israel for 10 years. When he died, he was buried at Ajalon in Zebulun. After Elon died, Abdon, son of Hillel from Parathon, judged Israel. He had 40 sons and 30 grandsons who rode on 70 donkeys. He judged Israel for eight years. When he died, he was buried at Parathon in Ephraim in the hill country of the Amalek. Amalekites. Uh, Amale um, Amalekites. Amalekites. Interesting to see how so many, they have so many children and grandchildren, and this, that, and third. I would like to, because you know what? Call me crazy, right? I was thinking about this. 
how today, how a man can equally look at, dip, like he could be talking to five different women and be fully committed to them and, and live comfortably with them so that they won't even suspect a thing unless some extraordinary thing happened. And I always find it interesting because when I think about this here, I'm like, you know, they have so many wives and concubines and it's like, how are you equally giving interest to one another? But we know things are changing and things aren't the same anymore. There's so much more to be a distraction to. I'm pretty sure then they have more time and energy and effort to invest in the individuals that were around them. But now we got electronic devices, we got social media, we got reality television, we got all that nasty stuff to keep us from fully committing to people. But it's still interesting to see how one man can entertain and occupy so many women. Chapter 13. This part of the reading, right? No, it's not. Okay, so I'm done. <laughs> I was like, that don't sound right. All right, y'all. So that was chapter 10 through 12. So 10, 11, and 12. It was really wordy. It was a lot of stories depicted and discussed in that uh, period of chapters. It was a lot. It was a lot to learn from. Uh, we still were learning God and his character. So it was very interesting and very enlightening. We know that nonetheless, the continual story is that God is merciful. He is gracious. He is loving and he has compassion. It's the same things that are displayed in Jesus as he lived, died and rose and will return. So that's that y'all. All right, so if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please talk to me. I talk back. I may be a little delayed, but you're never going to be denied. I love talking to y'all, and I love um, engaging with y'all. I just have a lot going on. Um, just to give you a little snippet of what's going on now, we are in the process of moving from one building to the next as far as church, where we went from having church twice a week, sometimes, I mean, twice a month, sometimes three, but we're sharing the building, so it wasn't an absolute and then now we're going to have church services every Sunday. And then we're going to have Bible study. So we're going to be even more busy. So may the Lord be with us. And of course, I have five children. And I have a husband who's does, who does at-home dialysis. So there's a lot going on here. But by the grace of God and through his strength, we are getting it all done. But I do ask that you guys continue to pray for me. Because on top of that, I am also responsible for three YouTube channels. This one. Um, bloom biblically and study christ so and uh, all of them have very concrete solid content so i'm continuously doing something so y'all continue to keep praying for me i love what i do and i appreciate y'all from you know for support and liking and sharing and subscribing and for following along with me and encourage me i'm just glad you're here so yeah stay tuned for next time day 94 well, we will finally read 13, so I'm so itching to read it. 13, 14, and 15 will be the chapters. And it doesn't look too bad, y'all. So, see y'all next time. Love you all. God bless. Take care. Bye.